series called Fast Forward, where we're looking at how Genesis relates to some of the other parts of scripture, particularly the first chapter of Genesis, where we read about God's hand in creation. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the sun and the moon and the stars. Um, and I want to ask Tim a kind of a funny question, because I know it's happened to me, but uh, Tim, we, we were talking here before we got going about times when maybe someone has told you, hey, aim at the moon or aim at, you know, some object in the sky. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, my game has been so bad at times. I mean, this this particular little story comes from, I think, when I was in, with Wally Armstrong in Australia 20 years ago, and my game was so bad playing with rental clubs and either the caddy or this young golf pro that was playing with me um, said, sir, see the cloud up there in the sky? He says, just aim for the cloud. You Don't aim for anything on the ground. Aim for the cloud. And he, his theory was that it would make me get back on <laughs> It would get me in the right position, you know, if I would aim to the clouds. And man, it worked well for a few holes. So, um, so it was it, like most golf tips then. It worked. Yeah, well like most golf tips. tips. And of course, you know, it didn't last very long. And problem with aiming for clouds is they sometimes they, they move around. So you got to yeah. be very careful about that one. Yeah, I did have a caddy at Bandon Dunes once where the shot was blind to tell me to aim at the moon. And yeah, yeah, that'll work. You know, I mean, it's not very often the moon's in the right position, right. but it happened to be that day. So yeah, yeah. kind of interesting. Awesome. Well, on what we call day four of creation, God created uh, and set the, the stars and the moon and the sky. And and uh, we talk, we, we look around scripture and we see lots of things with reference to uh, sunshine, moonshine, and the shining of stars. Um, in the end of Daniel, at the end of Daniel's prophetic book, we read about how the wise will shine like stars, metaphorical, of course, but it's uh, something that we can all really relate to. Yeah. Um, it, and I know you're a guy who who really loves some of those those mental pictures uh, that scripture gives us. Yes, and, and um, I would say God didn't make the stars and then go away. He's still making them. I'm yeah. sure you, you've seen the Louis Giglio, Chris Tomlin video that it was done several years ago now, but they remind us that new stars are being formed yeah every second a new star yep so he reminds us if you think you're really small it's because you are really small okay <laughs> uh, we again we're the creation just the whole idea of god being the creator and not just once upon a time but continuing to create new stars the universe is expanding all the genius uh atheists even who don't believe anything will agree that the universe is expanding yeah god is continuing to create um all of the time so i love that i love that basic idea i do think that the word star has been um misplaced you know in our in our current culture we um you know this idea that the stars are michael jordan or lebron james or yeah. pick out anybody you want to in golf tiger woods um, and, uh, that's, that's a fallacy. The only star is Jesus himself. Mm. And that's why I've always, one of my favorite, favorite Bible stories is about Stephen. Uh, Stephen, the first martyr, uh, the Bible says that he was, his face was radiant mm -hmm. as they were, as they, as he was being killed, as he was speaking, his face was radiant. And, um, it says that he was full of wisdom, full of power, full of grace, full of the Holy Spirit. These are all words in Acts, the sixth or seventh chapter. Yeah. Seventh. Know that he was full of all those things because he also was full of the word of God. So he was full. So I like to call him a full moon. Huh. Uh, he was, has, he had no power of his own, but he reflected the light of the star, which is Jesus Christ. So I think that's our goal is to be a full moon. And unfortunately, most of us are like the real moon. We're full one day a month. Yeah. And then there's another day, <laughs> everything in between. We go from nothing to being full. And certainly God's hope for us is that we will reflect the light of him and be full moons. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's helpful that uh, we're, we, to be reminded of things like that. In fact, I was reading just something with my wife 
uh, yesterday about uh, faith being like the dew of the morning. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. thick on the grass, but then it anxieties and you know distractions burn it off during yeah. the day. And yeah. and uh, we, we we do well, you know, we do well when we really contend to keep our faith, to keep our uh, brightness. Uh, all day, every day, and that's not always going to work, but it's certainly something to shoot for. Shoot for the moon, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I think that honestly, the key is the word. If you stay in the word, there's hope. Yeah. Uh, the, the greatest sermon in the Bible, I think, is is Stephen in Acts seven. I think it is. I hope that I didn't. Miss it is. Book. Yeah. And um, how how was he full of grace, power, wisdom, and the Spirit? Well, he was full of the word. Mm -hmm. with no notes he quoted genesis to jesus yeah and um that's if you're full of the word you're going to be a full moon oh awesome well thanks tim mm -hmm. and we're so glad that uh, all of you are with us we'll be back in a week with another in our series fast forward